Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land. I'm Raleen Marks, your host, and uh, we bring you the news headlines from Israel every Monday to Thursday, right here on this very platform. So like uh, we do every day, let's take a look at today's top stories, starting, of course, with coronavirus. Israel has seen a significant spike in the last couple of days of infections, mostly in and around schools. And today, more schools were shuttered or put into lockdown, sending at least 700 students into quarantine. At the moment, over 30 schools have been locked down due to this increase in coronavirus infections. So let's take a look at the stats as they currently stand. At the moment, 17,343 people have been uh, diagnosed with COVID-19 since the start of the global pandemic. At the moment in Israel, 2,097 people are currently infected and 290 fatalities. Within the infections, we have 28 people in critical condition and 28 people requiring ventilators and 14,955 people have made full recoveries. And uh, the, um, the three metrics by which we are measuring the uh, progress or the process of the COVID-19 virus so, to, uh, so as to determine whether or not we either go back into lockdown or continue to lift restrictions are as follows. We can't have more than 100 infections per day. Now this uh, right now, is an area where we are seeing a high level of infections, but also the level of uh, critical patients and those needing ventilators is still coming down. So we really, really hope that uh, there will be a drop in the rate of infections and that people make full recovery soon. And our thoughts and prayers are with anybody around the world who has been infected with COVID-19 and uh, our hearts are with anybody who has lost loved ones due to the spread of this virus. Last night in Tel Aviv, many Israelis took to the street outside the Tel Aviv office of the Jerusalem-based um, US Embassy in Israel. Uh, many protested in solidarity with the uh, black community and the protests going on in uh, the United States and uh, over the death of George Floyd, who was murdered by a policeman while in his custody. Israelis also protested what they see as any kind of uh, police brutality, many bearing the signs, uh, we stand against uh, brutality here, there and everywhere. In other news uh, related to these protests, uh, the pop artist known as Dua Lipa the other day posted some uh, extremely incendiary anti-Semitic comments and images on her Instagram page. And while she has not apologized for it, she has removed the uh, offensive images. However, there is a growing um, petition around Israel uh, asking Israeli radio stations to stop playing any of her music. So it looks like our younger generation is becoming extremely active in fighting what they see as injustice anywhere to anybody. Now, um, over the last couple of weeks, we've spoken about uh, the visit of Mike Pompeo, the US Secretary of State, to Israel, and there has been a lot of uh, conjecture in the world media as to who is to blame for the start and the spread of the coronavirus, and many are pointing fingers at China, and it looks like the US and China are embroiled at the moment in some kind of war of words. Now, unfortunately, Israel is being caught in the middle. Over the last couple of years, uh, the Israeli um, uh, foreign ministry and uh, many Israeli diplomats have worked very, very hard to bolster trade ties between the Jewish state and uh, the Asian tiger. However, uh, Israel's strongest ally is the United States and uh, the United States at the behest of uh, President Trump and Secretary uh, Pompeo have appealed to the Israelis to rather not um, get involved with China, to uh, 
take uh, more of the United States side in everything. In fact, it was rumored that Secretary of State Pompeo's visit here several weeks ago was to push that very fact. So at the moment, Israel remains a little bit of a football, but uh, last week a very interesting announcement coming from the Israeli government that the building of what will be the, the world's biggest desalination plant, Sorik 2, will be given to an Israeli consortium rather than a Hong Kong-based company as uh, was previously thought. So watch the space. Things are about to get uh, very, very interesting. You know, Israel is a small country. We do have a, a growing economy, and especially in this time, um, you know, we want to be able to trade with as many countries around the world as possible. However, we're also concerned. We don't want to um, anger, and we don't want to turn uh, on our greatest ally, the United States. And uh, we also have to remember that we work and we get incredible cooperation, especially with regards to security from the USA. So, as we say, watch the space and uh, watch our website because there might be some op-eds on this very subject popping up soon. But speaking of our website, you can check out our original content at www.layoftheland.online. Don't forget that we do have a Facebook page as well. Give us a like or a follow, share our content. And we also have a YouTube channel. We have got social media licked. So uh, if you're on um, YouTube right now, look for us at the Israel Brief. Click on the subscribe button and join our growing community. So with uh, the Wednesday edition of the Israel Brief, I'm Renee Marks and we'll chat again tomorrow.